Hello, we will discuss about diagonal relationship under periodic properties. This you can study in groups also, group first, group second, group third also you are going to discuss diagonal relationship. What is diagonal relationship? Generally, there are few elements. See this, lithium, sodium, potassium. They belong to one group. So, you can expect some similarities between them. Then, beryllium, magnesium, calcium. One more group will take boron, aluminium, gallium. Group 1A, 2A, 3A. I am writing this. Then, carbon, silicon, germanium. So, when you are looking at particular group, for example, these three, there is some similarities. There must be some similarities. It's a regular trend. It is expected. But interesting thing is, lithium and magnesium have some relations. Beryllium and aluminium, boron and silicon. These three pairs, they show some similarities. They show some similarities in their properties. Why? Okay, the reasons we will discuss and this particular relation is called a diagonal relation. Diagonal relation is generally shown by, this is second period elements, these are third period elements. Second period and third period elements, when they are mentioned, from between the first and second, that is lithium and magnesium, between second and third period, that is beryllium and aluminium, between third and fourth, that is boron and silicon, there are some relations, there are some similarities. This is called a diagonal relation according to your mathematics they are diagonally related but this is diagonal relationship why why and what are the similarities we will take those points first reasons reasons for the diagonal relationships the first reason is due to same electronegativity not same you can say similar electronegativity the electronegativity is going to be almost same but due to similar radii atomic radius is going to be almost same then the most interesting word is same polarizing power the polarizing power is going to be same what is polarizing power Polarizing power is directly proportional to ionic charge of cation and divided and inversely proportional to radius square. So, polarizing power you can say is proportional to charge by radius square. Polarizing power directly proportional to charge, inversely proportional to radius, exact if you want radius square. But So, similar electronegativity similar radius and similar polarizing power are the main reasons for the diagonal relationship so which elements i was telling you diagonal relationship lithium with magnesium it's a combination beryllium with aluminium it's another combination and one more combination is boron with silicon these are diagonally related okay now two three examples we'll see what type of uh, properties they are showing the best simple property is beryllium oxide and aluminium oxide both are amphoteric in in general i am saying beryllium carbide aluminium carbide on hydrolysis both they produce methane better beryllium carbide and aluminium carbide will give you methane on hydrolysis if you take lithium, lithium combinations, we said lithium and magnesium beta, both directly react with nitrogen to form nitrites, Li3N, Mg3N2, magnesium nitrite. Sodium cannot do, okay, but magnesium will do. Lithium and magnesium properties are like that. So, these kind of similarities you can take between boron and silicon also. Beryllium, aluminium, lithium, magnesium and boron, silicon. This is called diagonal relationship not much uh, important you can say but uh, these terms are important in every lesson that is um, group one group two group three group four you are going to get this as a paragraph
along with this you will be getting there some very interesting lines that is anomalous properties of second period we know second period elements lithium beryllium boron carbon nitrogen oxygen fluorine neon there is no need to discuss but these are having some special properties but the reason for that is they are having only snp block snp orbitals because of only snp orbitals they are having some special characteristics i'll give you a few lines you just remember this that's enough lithium and beryllium if you see they form covalent compounds but lithium down elements that is sodium potassium beryllium down elements magnesium calcium all they are ready to form ionic compounds okay lithium and beryllium belong to second period beta so this is the anomalous property that means lithium and beryllium having somewhat non metallic character but in the same groups the remaining elements are having completely ionic compounds otherwise they will be having most metallic nature beta so this is one point which to be noted boron can show a maximum covalency of 4 means it can form maximum four bonds but maximum covalency is 4 like bf4 minus it can form maximum four but but remaining elements like aluminum in this group they can show six cells okay aluminum can show the maximum covalency is six that means they can form six bonds the reason for this is again the same thing beta only s and p orbitals i said no d orbitals are available because of non availability of d orbitals at this range the maximum covalency of these group elements will be this period elements will be four beta this period elements will be four like boron carbon nitrogen oxygen all these okay now maximum covalency for this is four oxygen is only three beta fluorine is only one carbon can form four bonds maximum four only nitrogen can form four bonds oxidation state of nitrogen is plus 5 but maximum covalency of nitrogen is only four okay oxygen three only h3o plus h3o plus type of compounds and fluorine is going to be only one and uh, multiple bonds between two same atoms is possible here only n triple bond n n double bond n oxygen double bond oxygen this type of nature you won't expect in remaining like p double bond p p triple bond p s double bond yes this kind of bonds are you cannot see but okay na silicon double bond silicon so this type of double bonds or triple bonds between the two same atoms is possible is the specialty of second period elements okay um i am just showing here the similar atoms you can take this type also c triple bond o c triple bond n c double bond o these are also possible that means between same atoms or between different atoms of the second period you can expect this for all these why they are showing all these kind of reasons all these kind of separate proper different properties the reasons are very simple beta one is small size second is large charge by radius ratio charge to radius ratio is more as we know down the group electronegativity decreases these are having high electronegativity and just now i was telling you there are no other orbitals vacant d orbitals are not available here they are not available absence of vacant d orbitals because of these they will be showing different properties small size large charge to radius ratio high electronegativity non availability of the vacant d orbitals this is about the second period anomalous behavior few important lines will discuss and will conclude the lesson periodic properties uh, chlorine bromine iodine if you take this is fine electron affinity beta where the fluorine will go okay now that's important point because down the group electron affinity should decrease so fluorine is not here fluorine is here so electron affinity is chlorine fluorine bromine and iodine most expected questions you can see okay fluorine will come there 
but the same thing but the same thing you don't expect in oxygen family that is sulfur selenium tellurium then oxygen for electron affinity electron affinity of sixth group elements will be following this order electronegativity fluorine more electronegative so in electronegativity there is no exceptions down the group it should decrease and it is decreasing here in this group i am saying fluorine chlorine bromine iodine you can consider even for the oxidizing capacity oxidizing capacity is almost equal to electronegativity only oxidizing others means accepting electrons that tendency is more for fluorine fluorine is having great oxidizing capacity highest ionization potential is for helium highest electronegativity is for fluorine next place goes to oxygen diagonal relationship just now we were discussing which will show and inert pair effect inert pair effect is shown by thallium plus 1 more stable than plus 3 these points are also important but lead plus 2 more stable than plus 4 few important lines about uh, last last lines of the periodic table you can say but all the points we have already discussed the remaining properties that is ionization potential electronegativity electron affinity all these atomic radius types of atomic radius all we were discussing along with this these are few important lines you can add there few other lines also you just remember ionic conductance means ionic mobility more the ionic mobility more will be the ionic conductance and if you want more mobility the radius must be small ionic conductance directly proportional to ionic mobility inversely proportional to ionic size okay so here i will ask you one question i will mention you one question this is most important question you see lithium plus sodium plus potassium plus rubidium plus if you are taking in molten state molten state but there is no water molecules which is more mobile which can move fast which can move fast here lithium in molten state the mobility is is more for lithium because size is small small size you can say for lithium but interesting thing if it is given if it is given in aqueous solutions if it is mentioned in aqueous solutions better there the things will go completely different now lithium sodium potassium rubidium and cesium ionic mobility or you say ionic conductivity everything is now in favor of cesium cesium is more now how why lithium sodium potassium rubidium cesium ionic mobility is more in aqueous solutions why this is happening why this is happening the reason is very simple but lithium is more nuclear charge because of small size nuclear charge is more small size because of this property it will be absorbing more water molecules it will be associating more water molecules much associated you can say better thus you are that that you are saying in terms of hydration the maximum hydration you can observe for lithium the reason is because of the more nucleus power when more hydration is there that means lithium is associated or attracted by more number of water molecules by the side of which degree of hydration is more for lithium when lithium molecule is surrounded by such kind of water molecules much so lithium cannot move here from there so lithium is almost arrested here better so the mobility of lithium will be minimum when the mobility is minimum the conductivity will also be minimum but the size you see this is all together this is called the size of the lithium so size of lithium in aqueous solutions is the highest size of lithium is going to be highest better lithium sodium plus potassium plus rubidium plus if you are taking like this 
this order is right for radii in aqueous solutions in aqueous solutions this is right but 100% right this th same thing you can apply in group 2 also for beryllium same thing you can apply this is very very interesting generally what we see is lithium is small size when small size is there ionic mobility should be more that is true that is true in molten state but not in aqueous solutions in aqueous solution the scenario is different because lithium is surrounded by more number of water molecules because of more hydration highest degree of hydration because of that its mobility is minimum in aqueous solutions because of its biggest radius so this is the radius in aqueous solutions then these were the few important lines i wanted to mention uh, we'll discuss some other topic next time okay done good day lakshma